Hello and welcome back to the Herta Save. This is episode number eight. And in the last video, if you've not watched it yet, pause it here, go back and watch it. Spoiler coming up. One, two, three. We won the league! And we did it in quite bizarre fashion. We lost our last game, so did Dortmund. We ended up winning it by a bit of a bottle job, but doesn't matter, we won the league. Get in. Before we go on, just a quick shout out to Hack on Evgen. Salute to that man. Two goals against Dortmund for Wolfsburg. He beat them, made us win the title. I love that man. We're going to try and sign him. We haven't signed him. In today's video, we are going to have a little look through our summer business. Have a look at the movers, the shakers, the ins, the outs, the people that I have brought in to try and win back-to-back -back titles and hopefully try and improve in Europe, maybe go a bit further in the Champions League this year. There's been a lot of business done, um, some pretty big signings in and one in particular big signing out. You'll have to go and see who that is. But yes, let's have, go and have a look at what kind of business we have done in the summer window 2023, I believe it is. Let's go. So as you can see, there are a number of players that we brought in on free transfers and a number of players that we brought in on the 1st of July, meaning that the transfers were actually done before the window opened. Um, the To go through them, Ad, uh, Adrian Dragona was a bit of a youth player, not really going to focus on him. First big one then is Bruno Zappelli. There he is. We brought him in for free. Um, he was on a free transfer. You can see he's got a nice bit of value, 23 million. He's 21 years old. His stats are all in nice places as an attacking midfielder. We don't actually use a cam in the tactics that we're using at the moment. So I am at the moment training him as an advanced playmaker here. Um, so he'll come in and that's the position he'll mainly play. He looks really, really strong actually across the board. With a bit of development, he can be a bit of uh, a useful player, I think. Um, and we'll see what we can do with him in the future. Next, we brought in an old favourite on the Hertha save, Andreas Pereira. If you've ever read the FM19 thread for my Hertha save, you will see that this guy became a club legend at Hertha Berlin. He even actually, after I'd moved on from Hertha, I went to Liverpool. He moved with me there for a million. I think he was 33 at the time. He ended up scoring, I think it was over 10 Premier League goals and had a, like an amazing season. So, yeah, I loved him. We brought him in on a free, mainly because of that. He'll option. Well, he'll be an option going into this season. I'm not sure how many starts he'll get. He is that slight level below the others, but for sentimental reasons, we brought in Andreas Pereira on a free transfer. We also brought in Pinamonti. Now, this is the first one of the frees that I have no real plans to play him. I mean, he looks okay. He's nothing special, but he's also. He's average, he's, he's quite good. He's on a relatively low wage for his ability though. Um, and my main plan for him is, I'm gonna try and sell him. Whether or not, well I couldn't, I didn't manage to sell him in the window we brought him in, but in January I'm gonna try and move him on for a bit of a profit. So we brought him in for a free transfer. His value is 26 million. I, think, I reckon we can get 20 million at least for him, which is a nice bit of money. Um, similarly, We've brought in Rodrigo de Paul, or Powell, you might say, actually, he's Argentinian. Um, we might play him, but if you just look at his value, he's actually really good. 49 million, well, 49 and a half million. He will definitely get some game time up and until January, then we'll reevaluate there. We might sell him for a bit of profit. We will see. Um, but other than that, he is actually pretty good. Uh, we brought him in on a free transfer. He's, we've managed to keep his wage down to 65k a week as well, which I think makes him, uh, people might actually buy him on that type of wage. And then moving on. They, oh, sorry. Those are the free transfers then that we brought in. There was one more free transfer which I'll bring you to. He wasn't on. He wasn't on a, a pre-contract. We didn't sign him. Approach to sign in that way. He actually his contract expired, and we brought in Luis Suarez, which I'm actually quite excited about this one. He is 36 years old, and he does lack a basic ability to run. It would seem. However, look at his mentals. Look at his technicals. He is only on 26k a week. He's very cheap to have and he's going to be a great mentor. At the very, very least, he's going to be a great mentor. Bit of a spoiler, he has played a couple of games and he's done all right. So um, you actually might get a bit of game time. Couldn't really resist. Also, one of the board objectives was to sign high reputation players and 
obviously he fits the bill on that. So we brought him in. I think it was the actual last transfer that we brought in, but we did bring in Luis Suarez. So those are the guys that we brought in on a free. Let's go and have a look at the ones that are now that we paid a bit of money for. First up of the transfers that we made that we paid actual money for is this man here, Igor Killman. Killman by name. Killman figuratively in terms of outscoring the opposition by nature. That rolls off the tongue. Make a chant out of that one. Um, he is a Belarusian 19 year old wonder kid with some very nice looking attributes, actually. I am quietly hopeful for the future about this guy we've gone and given him a real face he is a regen new gen sorry um but we've gone and given him a real face someone who looks a bit angry with the name igor killman that's what we went for he's an advanced forward he's got a little bit of pace he's very agile great balance um his physicals look pretty good for a 19 year old he has 16 finishing already which is probably the thing that you know i looked at first of all He's loads of potential. We're going to try and give him some game time this year. So look out in the future for Igor Killman. Next up is another youngster by the name of Fabio Jose. Here he is. He's a 19-year-old Brazilian box-to-box -box midfielder. And again, lots of potential on this guy. If you look at his attributes there, he's pretty well suited to being a box-to-box -box midfielder already at the age of 19. Uh, his, his determination is 18, he's got a resolute personality, his physicals look really good, 17 balance, 16 acceleration, 17 stamina for that box to box, 16 teamwork. Uh, his, his long shots are only 10, his finishing's 10, a few things to work on his composure, aggression. However, overall he looks like a very, very solid 19 year old. I've already sent him out on loan, he's gone to Hanover for the season hoping that he's going to play a few games there. It looks like he's going to be one of their starting players, which is also exciting. He's going to get Bundesliga football. Pretty uh, pretty, pretty excited for the future on this guy. He, I think he will end up being a first-team player. If he's not, we bought him for 400k. There is definite, uh, definite room for profit there, even if it doesn't work out. However, I actually think he will end up being a first-team player for us here at Hertha. There he is, Fabio Jose. Next up is a man that needs little introduction for those of you who play FM, I'm assuming most of you do, and that is the midfield maestro that is Sandro Tonali. We've brought him in for, finally, by the way, we've been tracking him since the start of the game, obviously you do. Uh, they need a lot of money, Brescia eventually did get relegated, he had a relegation clause for 18 million. We didn't get him that season, we waited another season and we ended up getting him now for an initial fee of 5.7 million, rising to 11.25. So you could say it's a bit of a bargain for him. Um, here he is, Sandro Tonali then. He's 23 now and he's probably been neglected a little bit at Brescia playing in Serie B. So I'm not sure he's quite the player that he can become. Um, hopefully he still develops a little bit and we see him turn into that beast player that he can can be on FM. But we'll, we'll see. Either way, he's going to be a decent option for us. We'll probably play him in a deeper role as a Regista and him and Arnie Meyer can, can rotate in that position. That's the plan for him. Anyway, he looks, he look, I mean, you guys know all about him anyway. He, he, he looks okay. He's still got plenty of chance to improve. However, our current coaches don't see a lot of potential on him. But anyway, there he is, Sandro Tonali, brought in for a bit of a bargain of 5.75 million. Could go to a little bit more than that, but yes, he's gonna be an option for us in midfield this season, Tonali. The next signing is another new gen player. His name is Enzo Yomaha. There he is there. We've brought Enzo Yomaha in from River Plate for 4.8 million. That was his release clause. He is, at the moment, a deep lying playmaker. However, we have plans to convert him to a complete wing back. I'll show you there, that's highlighting his ability as a complete wing back. He's fairly well suited already. He's only 21, there's a chance for him to learn this new position. And he is quite well suited to it. The only real thing that we need to particularly focus on is his crossing. So he is training in that at the moment. Um, but yeah, he's going to provide a bit of backup as our right wing back. Potentially actually becoming the number one 
should we move on Benjamin Henricks, who actually had a, quite a bit of interest in him in the summer window. We ended up keeping him, but I'm thinking maybe it was Spurs, the team who were really trying hard for him. They're offering upwards of 40, 45 million for him. So if they come in again for that, this guy will become the number one right back and we'll go from there. So yeah, I'm quite excited. He is short. He's only five foot seven. He's got decent agility and balance. His first touch and technique is really good. And I think think he can do a job for us. So so watch watch this space in terms of him becoming a right back. Enzo Yamaha. I keep nearly saying Yamaha on him. This next signing is quite possibly the most exciting of the summer transfers and he's by far the most expensive of them. His name is Marcello Bianchi. I'm not sure why I did quite so much inflection on his name there. Uh, Marcello Bianchi has been brought in from Strasbourg for 37.5 million to start with and that could actually rise to a humongous 63 million. Here he is though, he is 21 years old. We brought him in when he was 20. He's actually had a birthday. And he, for a young player, he's only 21, he's had four caps for Argentina already. Just check out those physicals. He's there, he's at the top of his game already in terms of physicals. If his acceleration improves and if his strength improves, what a player he is going to become. He is a winger, he plays as an inverted winger on the right hand side. He is both footed which is always a nice thing to have. He's versatile. And yeah, his technicals are already pretty strong. 17 crossing, 17 dribbling. First touch is 16, 16 technique. His mentals will improve with age. That is the one thing you can always guarantee. I'm really excited to, to use him. He's gonna be our first choice uh, inverted winger on that right-hand side. And yeah, he looks pretty good, doesn't he? If you just look at his record at Strasbourg last year in the Liga 1, he scored well, he scored 13 goals, 6 assists, 7 player of the matches in his 37 starts or 37 games there. He actually played 36 games the year before. So he's had a bit of football in France. We've brought him to Germany. Let's see what he can do here because I have a feeling this guy can become... Well, he can go right the way to the top. We've put him on a 5-year deal. He's, we're paying him 90k a week. His value is at 60 million. He's just, he's going to be insane, isn't he? Uh, let's let's hope he is anyway. <laughs> there he is. Anyway, Marcello Bianchi. The penultimate signing that we have made then is this man here, Mikel Cuisant, the former Bayern midfielder. We've brought him in for 8.25 million. And another one that's probably not been best served by staying at his current club for as long as he has. He's probably been stilted in terms of his, his development a little bit by staying there. However, we've still got a very good player and I know in past FMs he can develop into a, to one of the top midfielders in the world. Um, he's only 24 still, so we might get a bit out of him. We only paid 8 million for him. There he is, Mikhail Cuisant. He's got... Very decent attributes across the board, actually, including his 16 passing, 16 technique. Very nice. He's going to play as one of our midfielders. Another option in there. We're actually pretty stacked in terms of midfield this year. I'm trying to have a look now at, is there a tactic that we could move towards that could get more of them on the pitch? Because it's definitely, definitely the area where we've got the most good players, if that makes sense. But yeah, we've brought him in for a decent... Uh, decent kind of bargain really and he's only registered as a squad player on 50k a week which is quite a lot but it could be a lot worse for for the stage we're at now going for the title and champions league there he is Mikel Cuisson the final signing that we did make this summer then is another one to try and please the board in terms of high rep players. We went out and we signed Son Hyung Min or Hyung Min Son as I actually would usually call him. I read that from there. Uh, Hyung Min Son we signed for £9.5 million up front. That could rise with a few varying different types of clauses up to 22 and a half. However, I actually feel like it probably won't and we might end up getting a bit of a bargain for 9.5 million. Here he is, he's 31 now. However, he's still got a lot to offer. His finishing is 16, his off the ball is 17. He's got still got great natural fitness. His, uh, his pace is still there, 14 pace. So even at 31, he's still gonna be pretty effective. 
He's going to play as that left-sided inverted winger in this tactic that we've got going at the moment. And we're paying him 100k a week, so a steady amount of wages there. But I feel like he is worth it. Also, you do get that boost in terms of shirt sales. We've already had that notification saying shirt sales in South Korea have gone through the roof, which is always nice as a bonus for a for signing a really good player as well um yeah i'm excited to get to use him this season bring in some big names now to her to berlin him and suarez probably the two that stand out in terms of big names this summer but yeah we've got him in hyung min son so those are the players that we brought in over the summer. There is one or two departures that I should tell you about as well. So I'm just going to show you the players that we sold on. A lot of these did actually fund some of the ones that we've that I've just shown you that we did bring in. So let's have a look at who we sold as well. Right, I'm over here now. And that is because I'm going to show you the players that we sold. And they are there. There's a few loans. First of all, Batista Meyer and Loic Mbeso, Willem Goebbels and Ibrahim Bika have all gone out on loan. We sold Ignacio Lacintana, a player that we brought in on a free transfer the season before. Actually, January, I think we brought him in. We sold him for 13 million to Saudi Arabia, and that's quite a nice little bit of profit there. And then you can see the big summer departure. I am desperately sad about this, it has to be said. He's probably been my favourite player of FM20 so far. He's just been that good for us. It's Sergio Gomez and Barcelona came in. They triggered his release clause of £93 million and he made his way over to sunny Spain. They gave him a bumper £275,000 per week contract and I suppose he couldn't really say no to that. So the main man Sergio Gomez has moved on to pastures new. It's a sad day for us here at Hertha when that was confirmed. But you know what? He brought in £93 million. It was... In terms of a money ball signing, one that went quite well for us. We brought him in for 1.4 million. He had three seasons with us where he did really well. He had a 7.4, a 7.45, and then in the last season, he scored 11 goals and got 16 assists. That's how good he was. A 7.83 overall average rating. It's time to wave goodbye to Sergio Gomez, but at least we made some money on him. I'm still sad. Other than that, the only other outs were, as I told you before, Fabio Jose went to Hanover on loan. Christian Freund, who's another youngster, went to our affiliates, Kaiserslautern. Kaiserslautern. And we also sold Reese Nelson for 15 million. He wasn't coping very well by the fact that we brought in some other wingers and he requested a transfer. So I said, All right, Reese, off you go. He did it well, he did pretty well for us, and we also made a profit on him in the two seasons he was here. He actually ended up playing 28 games last year and scored seven goals. So we wish you well, Reese, but, you know, we'll take the 15 million and, and, and go on from there. We actually pretty much spent that 15 mil on bringing on uh, Hyung Min Son. So, you know, we'll take it. Um, anyway, those are the players that we, that we sold during the summer. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that little rundown of our transfers in this summer transfer window. And if you did enjoy it, please consider liking the video and hitting that subscribe button. We are still working our way towards 100 subscribers. 100 subs is important because we can change our the link to the YouTube and actually put Clayton's FM in there. So if you could help me out with that and hit that subscribe button, that'd be excellent. Make sure you turn on the bell as well for notifications for each video. I'm still aiming towards getting three videos out per week here alongside the three streams per week to try and bring you as much content as I possibly can. And yeah, if you're enjoying that, please, please let me know in the comments or hit that like button, all those things. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another video. But until then, peace out, Beta.